why is PDIV and PDEV so important? Well, let's explain this over here. Um, we already talked about this in this video. So we learned that the partial discharge inception voltage and the extinction voltage is a little bit different. So let's talk about for the following example. Let's talk about the idea that I have a 22 kV cable. I can buy 22 kV medium voltage cables. And let's imagine I'm operating them. I mean, this is the face-to-face -face voltage, right? The face-to-ground voltage is divided by the square root of 2. And this is around 12.8 kV. This means the U0 of my 22 kV cable, U0, that's the operating voltage, is 12.8 kV. So I will operate this cable at 12.8 kV face-to-ground. And obviously, this would be one very important value to check. So let's imagine we have this kind of service discharge here, right? We said that the, the red and the orange one would be a service discharge, could be, for example, in a cable. So this is the partial discharge inception voltage, and this is the partial discharge extinction voltage. So now let's imagine 12.8 um, is probably around here. So this is the state. So now imagine you are going to the object to the cable, example given. You're going to go there and you do something like it's an online measurement, an online partial discharge measurement, which has its good parts and it has its bad parts, and this is one of the bad parts. So you're testing at 12.8 kV because this is it is running, and you're not measuring any partial discharges. So now you could say, hey, this cable is good. However, if there would be a very short overvoltage on the cable, 5%, 10%, sometimes even 50% in some networks, can happen for a short period of time. Example given, um, uh, the tap on a transformer changes, or there, is, uh, there are other reasons why we have a short overvoltage. Or we have a transient. This is a very, very short overvoltage. So transients come usually from switching or from thunderstorms or from other things in the network. We are not going to talk about this right now, but we have a very short overvoltage. And then this could trigger partial discharges. And if you take, keep in mind that there are cables who experience tenth of transients per day, just imagine one of these transients, or one out of a hundred, triggers the service discharge. Which means, we, for a very short time, we're just going 10% up. 10% means now we're here. And guess what? Our service discharge just started. And now, after you know, this short over voltage of 10%, we're going back to our nominal voltage. This would be 12.8 kV. And the service discharge is still on. It's not off, because the extinction voltage is below our value. So what are we left with? We are left with a device, with a high voltage device, that is in service and has partial discharges. So fortunately, if your service discharge happens inside a, inside a joint, or Americans have the tendency to call it splice, or an intermination, fortunately these things are built in a way that it doesn't fail immediately, but it will erode the insulation and sooner or later the cable will fail. Rather later than sooner, it could take months, it could take years, it could take hours, but usually it's years. So that is, that is, that is the reason it is important to understand that there is a hysteresis between partial discharge inception voltage and partial discharge extinction voltage. That's pretty much it. For transformers, it is exactly the same game. There is no real difference, right? A transformer works at a special voltage level and um, you're testing, for example, online, especially transformers, we like to test online when they're in service, because getting a voltage source for a transformer, ah, that's kind of hard, because you need a lot of power there. And um, so very often we test them online, so we test something. So literally, when we test something online, we can't really say it is PD-free, or there is no issue. We can literally only say, while we were testing, we didn't measure any partial discharges, hoping that if there would have been one, we would have tested them, or we would have measured them, right? Um, but literally, we have to say, we do not know what happens if there's an overvoltage. So there's one trick that you could try to do, or if you're the owner of a transformer. If I would test a transformer, I would literally go there and say, hey guys, I know it is in service, but can we just have a short overvoltage, or can we have an overvoltage, at least for the time of the testing? So I would probably go there, connect everything as much as I can, if the transformer is online, and then ask them, could you take the tap changer and just change the tap to a little bit so if you have a little bit of overvoltage. Uh, same goes, right? We're going to go to a transformer and they shut it off, they ground it. I go up there, 
put in the uh, partial discharge measurement equipment, usually at the bushings. Um, mm -hmm. Then I, you climb down, uh, they, they unground it again, they switch it on, and then you can do the testing. And then it would be awesome to have at least for a, sh for a while a little bit of over voltage. So, um, once again, uh, Corona, that's an outside partial discharge, right? We don't care much about this anyway. This is not the biggest issue, and the, and the, and, and the history isn't so big for service discharge uh, for uh, for service discharges we have a bigger hysteresis and for voids well they they differ um in the last video i said okay this hysteresis here could be void one and this one here could be void two this is not 100 percent uh, correct right i'm talking about oversimplifications technically let's call this void group number one because it's a full group i do not know i mean technically it could be multiple voids acting at the same point, right? The first one gets partial discharge. Very often it creates some kind of radiation. This could trigger partial discharge in the other ones because we always need our start electron. And if it doesn't come from photoionization, we need some kind of radiation, example given gamma radiation. So sometimes it happens that you have the first void, uh, the first void starts and um, triggers the others. So this could actually be multiple voids behaving exactly the same or more or less the same. And this would be another group of voids. It could be, you know, a group of them or just a single one. And that's more or less the same thing, right? Imagine that your the voltage where you're working is here. So if uh, this would be our U naught. So here we don't see any partial discharges because unfortunately the voids start here, just like a, a couple of volts afterwards. But if the voltage goes down the voids could still be on. And please understand, right, this is actually the, uh, the extinction voltage. The extinction voltage is here, where the void no longer shows any partial discharges, right? So same here. This would be more or less our inception voltage, or you could say this is inception voltage, or we want to say that. And this one here is the extinction voltage. So this is the area that uh, we have to worry about. So um, this is one of the concerns people can have is online testing. And uh, this is very important to understand inception voltage, extinction voltage, hysteresis, and that different phenomena of partial discharges have different hysteresis with. Thank you very much for watching. See you soon.